or Joshua 12, let's call this one East-West because it is roughly going to be divided according to the number of kings that Moses defeated and the number of kings that Joshua defeated. Understanding that Moses was not able to go into the promised land, this is in many ways one of those chapters that helps us understand the intergenerational challenge of setting up future generations for success. Why? Because Moses, as we've already talked about, was able to put his pain aside to position Joshua to do all of the great things he did in taking many more kingdoms on the west side of the Jordan River. But as we approach chapter 13, we are going to see Joshua in much the same perspective, understanding that in the very first verses of chapter 13, God is going to say, you are very old, but there is very much land left to possess. And so the question for Joshua will be, how is he positioning the nation to move on after him? And so this is not just a Moses Joshua thing. This is going to be something that we're also going to see that's very uh, crucial in the passing of the baton from David to Solomon, understanding that Solomon, his son, is going to take over self-described as a young man trying to rule a mighty nation. But um, in many ways, even though David, uh, being a man of blood, is not going to be able to build a temple, he sets Solomon up to finish the temple. And Solomon, even though he builds a great kingdom, one of the things that's going to stand in the way of him positioning his kids to be successful after him is his own indulgence or overindulgence, taking many wives when God had warned him that those wives would have much the same result as the seven nations would have on Israel. Just as the seven nations would tend to draw their heart away from God, likewise, Solomon's many wives would do the same thing and result in him not being able to position his sons to realize the kind of success that his father David had positioned him to realize. And so understand when we're looking at the baton being passed from Moses to Joshua, Joshua to the nation of Israel, and so on and so forth. It is not only important for us to consider building a strong legacy, it's important to make sure that whatever we build as much as possible is free from the baggage of our choices. Because understand, Solomon was probably the most successful of any of these kings, but his kids were not able to prosper because of the baggage he handed them along with the inheritance. So my prayer for me is my prayer for you to the degree that one, we have a godly attitude that we are to take what God has given to set up the next generation to succeed after us, that we do it free of the baggage, which once again requires honest self-evaluation, that while we are building a healthy legacy, that we are doing it in a healthy way so that our kids and our next generations are positioned to succeed in the way that they should. That's why we say God's best to you as you go forward in him, God willing, building something worthy to be passed on to the next generation.